consume to reflect the actual workplace practices to be relevant so that its graduates possess the skills required by employers, namely the industries. This assumption has shaped the TVET curriculum and influenced the academic and professional requirements of its teaching staff. However, this assumption has been reviewed in light of the transformation caused by rapid globalization which has altered the requirements of the industries and also how they operate. The needs of the globalized industries now require graduates with higher order thinking, innovation, creativity, soft skills and communication skills as well as the relevant technical and professional knowledge. The impact of this on any TVET institution that want to stay relevant is significant. Before we venture any further, it might be a good idea to examine the history and origins of the TVET, which is a combination of vocational, technical, education and training. Vocational education started as courses which offer an alternative and easier pathways to academic schools, often leading to careers in manual craft and skills. Vocational education dates back to the informal apprenticeship of craftsmen centuries ago, prior to the heavily industrialized 20th century. Next, we have technical education, which is considered a step above vocational education and combines academic schooling with vocational education. Technical education produces the technician and supervisors required by the industries, especially in the manufacturing and engineering. Academic or normal engineering education, which usually leads to a university degree and so on, is considered the highest ranked with students having the technical and professional knowledge to become engineers and managers. These professions normally require individuals engaging in higher cognitive thinking and problem solving skills. Graduates of these three so-called streams are more often than not segregated institutionally. Segregation is often reflective of the socio-economic background of the students. Those from lower income enrolled in vocational based institutions, while those from the other end of the spectrum are mostly enrolled in universities and colleges. And thus, we have these three streams supplying the workforce with the required labour skills to fill the various levels of occupation, which again separates them further in terms of knowledge and skills routine. This view still persists to this day and I believe it is a view held in many countries. However, the changes in the demands of the global economy and industry have challenged this so-called division in knowledge base. Now, the knowledge economy requires, in fact, demands workers from all levels with higher order reasoning and problem solving, as well as communication skills, which are skills that are more often associated with university or professional graduates. Thus, the 21st century has seen TVET progressing from a divided and divergent approach to a more convergent system with the lines blurring between the vocational, technical and academic aspects of education. So how can Malaysian polytechnics adapt to these transitions? As most polytechnic educators are aware, we have been slowly evolving from a heavy work-based institution of higher learning to a curricular which puts greater emphasis on general scientific principles and theory practice combination. Teaching methods have also evolved from the chalk and talk, teacher-centered and apprenticeship approach to using information technology, virtual classrooms and learner-centered approaches. However, it cannot be denied that Malaysian polytechnic educators have more on their plate nowadays with the need for compliance and accountability posed by the various quality accreditation that polytechnics need to abide by. At the same time, the changes in pedagogical approaches relevant to the demands of the present and future times must be faced heads on. Add this to the fact that students they teach 
have increasingly different attitudes and values and we have educators who are constantly challenged to stay ahead of the game. In our present curriculum, we now have a course called Soft Skills and we have units that coordinate employability skills by providing training, courses, seminars and workshops to students. We have changed our teaching approaches, use more IT-based pedagogical methods, changed the language of teaching in classes, as well as attended trainings and seminars to improve ourselves. But I believe that there are some skills and indeed values that cannot be quantified and which can be better taught in a formal setting. It is also my belief that humans pick up skills better by being exposed to it daily than practicing or doing it repeatedly instead of just learning about it in a day or two. Based on our own experiences, don't we learn best from bits and pieces? A case in point is about the often heard complaints by employers that graduates lack communication skills, whether interpersonal, intrapersonal or group communication skills. Although there are formal training courses available, we can also incorporate this in our everyday teaching. Being teachers, isn't it normal for us to love to talk, give us a microphone and it's like a party just started? From years of teaching, we should have developed at least minimal presentation skills and if we haven't, then we can improve these skills. When we talk to our students, we are unconsciously transmitting some kind of communication to them. And whenever the opportunity arises, it is good practice to make them aware of their communication skills, both non-verbal and verbal ones. After all, in a student-centered learning approach, students should be talking more and be involved in the process of their own learning. If Green's approach is really implemented, then we should have no problem to observe their communication skills during any teaching and learning sessions. In addition, I think most of us do have some form of social media communication with our students and we can even use that to help improve their verbal communication skills. A word of caution is to remember we are dealing with teenagers and young adults here. So any comments must be made in a positive way, which aren't unwelcome or preachy. And try not to start a sentence with the words, back in my days. In short, try to remember what we didn't want to hear from our elders back when we were that young, or as my son put it, back in the days when dinosaurs still roamed the earth. Another popular topic in TVAP and in Malaysian education is HOTS or Higher Order Thinking Skill, HOTS. Most people would confuse academic achievements with having a high IQ. Although this is true in most cases, it doesn't necessarily mean having a high IQ equate to doing well in schools and vice versa. From my own personal experiences, I have come across several students who did not do well at all in schools. They then enrolled in community colleges before continuing their studies in polymers. I taught some of these students and I was teaching them about C language programming. Now, programming is a subject that requires logical thinking and high problem solving skills, which are usually categorized in the higher order cognitive skills. And it is not an easy subject to teach nor learn. When I learned that I was assigned to teach this class, I was honestly not expecting much at all. But there were several students, about six or seven of them, who excelled in it. And oftentimes, I had to be prepared to give them extra or harder questions in lab to prevent them from getting bored. While other students from another class of mine had much better academic results, were still struggling with the first problem, these students were already begging for more exercises. 
and it was evident that they enjoyed learning to write programs. So I asked them directly, how did you do in your SPM, which is about equivalent to the O-levels in the UK? And their results, which she told me, were often really rather bad. And I said, well, it's quite hard to believe because you seem to understand programming very well, which is not an easy task at all. And one young man replied, and I quote, we hadn't seen the light back then. We didn't know the importance of education and we did not know how to improve our understanding. These students went on to obtain well-deserved A's, not only in my subject that semester, but most importantly, I would often see them sitting at the cafeteria or cafes providing free Wi-Fi, bent over their laptops, and writing C language programs. Those boys went on to do very well in their diploma studies, and several now hold degrees in engineering. Often, we think as educators that we teach our students, but there have been numerous occasions when my students have taught me so much more, and this was one example. Never assume students with low academic qualifications cannot do well in their post-secondary education. Never assume students who do well in tests and exams can easily conquer higher order thinking skills. I am a firm believer that our exam-oriented systems have produced children who does rote learning. As Sir Ken Robinson said in his legendary TED Talk, schools can be the graveyard for creativity. Students are routinely taught how to provide the right answer instead of to think, to be creative and spontaneous. However, I am glad that our education system is slowly moving towards reducing rote learning and encouraging our students to develop higher order thinking skills. The challenge for TVET educators at the moment is that we are teaching the generation of students who were used to rote learning and place the utmost importance on answering the correct way. And we have been encouraging them. If we only accept answers as stated in the marking scheme, if we do not give them ample time and resources to work out the problem on their own, and if we ignore blatant copying or cheating in classes, we do not encourage them to think when we insist on a correctly worded discussion or summary or work out a maths problem using only the method that we show to them. We do not encourage them to think when we place more importance on the final project or product looking good and done the correct way instead of the creativity, effort and innovation they had shown. These are the small things that actually make a difference and we should start from the beginning of the TVET education. We can teach higher order thinking skills slowly and gradually by providing pebbles or breadcrumbs at first, huge ones maybe, but then slowly reducing the sizes until finally, just like Hansel and Gretel did, eventually find their way home without breadcrumbs or pebbles. Sure, they met a psychotic witch and were nearly eaten, but let's focus on the bigger picture. Perhaps during the first lessons or lab sessions, we can give them detailed guidance or instructions or notes, but we should reduce, reduce this gradually while increasing the length of time given for the students to solve the exercises or work out the problem. Teach them how to think as well instead of focusing on the solutions. Never, ever accept copying and cheating in any form, even though it sometimes makes life easier for us. Thank you.